All right. All right. So it looks like we're rolling. Okay, so uh, today we have with us graph data and machine learning engineer, Harry Dimitropoulos. Um, he's going to be continuing down the graph provision pipeline, digging into enrichment by mining with a focus on how we extract funders information. So we kindly ask you to please keep your microphones muted during the presentation to avoid any background noise. And at the end, we'll have about 30 minutes of discussion where we'll give you the floor to ask any questions. So please write all your questions either here in the Zoom Q&A or in the Google Doc, um, which you can find in the chat. I'm gonna send that in just a second. And any questions we don't get to today, we'll answer directly in the document. So here I'm going to post our Google Doc um, and also just a couple other links for the um, past community call materials where you can find this recording um, from tomorrow or Friday once it gets uploaded and all past uh, materials as well. If you missed anything, the Google Doc where you can post your questions and also, of course, our user forum where later on you still have a channel to, to connect with us to ask anything or questions, post tips or anything. So we have all those in the chat now. So with that, I'm going to pass the floor over to Harry. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Alain. Uh, so um, today we're going to be covering the enrichment by mi mining uh, stage. Um, so I, since this is the first, uh, the fifth call, uh, I assume that uh, I will not repeat information about the graph. I assume that most of the people uh, joining know that uh, it's a scientific knowledge uh, graph. Uh, uh, it's a collection of metadata describing objects in the research life cycle and their relationships, relationships among them. And um, it's uh, it has uh, a larger number of data sources, 131K. These are not the latest numbers because I, I can ask them. I'll explain why uh, later today we had a, a problem with the data center due to a large fire that happened in in uh, in Warsaw, in Poland, uh, in a shopping, a shopping center uh, located next to the data center. So the power supply was... Um, was disrupted a few days ago, and it still hasn't been restored. And the our partners at ICM have done their best to uh, bring up most of the services, but not all. Uh, so they're working with the diesel diesel power generators at the moment. Um, but anyway, so the previous data was 131k data sources, 3.5 million projects, uh, 250. Um, eight almost research outputs, so that's publication software, data sets, and other research products. And the, the graph is updated nearly uh, monthly. Um, and it's uh, I think this has been covered in previous uh, calls, but uh, the the sources are are from um, contributing to the graph are, are varied. So we have um, tools um, and software sources like Software Heritage, GitHub. Uh, publishers, uh, European international funders, uh, registries like Orchid, Roar, Datasite, Crossref, uh, uh, our infra, e infra, and research infrastructure sources uh, like Daria, Elixir, um, thematic and institutional repositories like Zenodo, PubMail, Hall Archive, uh, aggregators like Doage, La Referencia. And research graphs like open citations and payable and things like that. And I'm just going to mention one slide on the data quality because it involves the enrichment through mining. So there's uh, again, I think these, if not covered in this call, they will be covered in future community calls. So things like the deduplication. So the open uh, graph merges duplicate records of the same scholarly work. Um, there's the enrichment through mining. We'll cover it in this talk. Uh, so I'll skip that. We'll see that uh, immediately. And there is the cleaning stage, which is an independent continuous aggregation process that utilizes vocabularies to harmonize the diverse data source records and ensure they're consistent, they are consistent and accurate bibliographic records. Uh, there is also additional disambiguation of journals, publishers, and licenses. And you can find more in the graph documentation pages, which I can show also later. So this is the main focus now. We're going back to the graph pipeline that most of you must have, have seen. So on the left, we have all the onboarded data sources, like the repositories, publishers, open access journals, registries, aggregators, and CRIS systems that feed the graph, which are registered through the provide uh, service, where the metadata is checked by the metadata validator so that it complies to the open air guidelines. 
and they can also be enriched by the open air broker. And then we also have all the other sources that I mentioned. So this, the first stage was the, the first stage was the aggregation uh, stage, which has been covered before. And today we'll be covering the enrichment by mining, where we process the full text of publications in order to uh, enhance the graph with new metadata. Uh, I'm just mentioning the whole process so that, again, we have, a, this is the, the duplication state uh, I mentioned before. So because we have maybe the same publications from many different sources uh, and different versions like preprints, postprints, and things like that, these are all uh, merged into the same entity, but uh, the, you can, all the information of the provenance of where uh, the, they came from is kept into the, in the graph. And there's a further enrichment by inference. This is a graph inference that happens after the text mining. So uh, links from the graph can propagate uh, to produce new knowledge. And there's the final stage where everything is harmonized um, based on standard vocabularies. And this produces the open air graph, which is available via a public uh, graph data set uh, in Zenodo and an API. So today's focus is on the full text uh, enrichment by mining. And so in order to do that, I have to mention about IIS, which is the system responsible for this. So what is IIS? It's the Open Air Information Inference Service. It's a flexible big data processing pipeline that supports full text mining and also metadata mining. Uh, so the point of it is to enrich the scholarly data with automatically inferred metadata. Uh, IIS defines uh, data processing workflows that connect the various models modules, mining modules that I will talk about, um, each one with well-defined inputs and outputs. Uh, the source code is available in GitHub, and the documentation can be found in the graph documentation pages under the enrichment by mining category. So um, IIS is a framework or a platform ha handling big data based on Apache Hadoop technologies. Um, and now to the modules that comprise uh, IIS. So there are different types of uh, mining modules. There are uh, modules for extracting cited and acknowledged concepts. So these are things to like links to projects and funders, uh, which I'll go into a bit more depth today. Uh, data sets, software by entities and other accession numbers, uh, patterns, uh, EOSC services and things like that but as well as links to custom concepts that link research objects to specific research communities uh, that we have in open air, uh, the connect communities and other initiatives in open air. Um, there is then uh, some classifiers, subject inference, uh, specifically the field of science taxonomy uh, module and the sustainable development goals classifications. Again, we'll, there's links in the slides that will be available uh, after the talk. Uh, to, to find more information about these, but I'll also um, mention them later on. Uh, there's also model, modules for affiliation matching, citation matching, document similarity, and metadata extraction. So as I said, the IS modules enrich all the open air graph, uh, the open air graph with their outputs. Uh, and the idea is to enhance uh, the relations, the research related entities with, with relations and missing attributes. Uh, with the goal of contributing to an enrichment of scholarly data and facilitating advanced analysis and understanding of the outputs, research outputs. Um, in open air, uh, for example, funders, research institutions, and research communities uh, use IIS services uh, via the graph in order to enhance their community or monitor dashboards and their metrics because the graph uh, and the mining is the backbone that feeds uh, those services. So first, I will go into a bit more depth because the kind of subject of the um, of today's talk was enriched by mi mining, but also um, uh, about funders' information. So the module I'll I'll, I'll I'll go into more depth is the project mining algorithm, and then we'll see the other ones, but not in as much depth. Uh, but you will get the idea of how they work. So the project mining algorithm, the idea is to mine the full text of publications in the graph uh, in order to extract uh, matches to project co codes, grant IDs to projects. So the algorithm uh, uh, links publications to funding uh, projects 
And in order to do that, it, it relies on metadata that we get from funders on grant identifiers um, and if there are acronyms available. There's other information that are provided by funders, uh, for example, you know, titles, dates, and things like that, which are used for other services. But the mining can work with uh, just that. This is the main principle. Uh, just to mention that it's implemented as a Python executable, uh, I'll, I will not go into these things, but they're available also in GitHub and there's papers that uh, people can read the details if they want. Um, so I'll, but and I, at a higher level, I'm just gonna go through the algorithm execution steps. Most of the mining algorithms work, work in a very similar way. So the first step is a pre-processing normalization of the full text. So there are many functions that can be used and depending on the, on the case, uh, some are used, some are not. So there's things like stop word or punctuation removal, tokenization, stemming, converting to lowercase. These are standard things that are done in order to facilitate the mining. Um, and then there's the main stage of string matching. So the grant identifiers, are, the projects are matched against the normalized text uh, using database techniques, which are efficient and quick. Um, so at the beginning of the, uh, at this stage, it's a very greedy algorithm. We will match anything that looks like the project number we were given, you know, the list of the projects that we have. But then we have the, the cleaning and validation stage where we will uh, actually throw away the links we do not, uh, are not relevant and uh, focus on the ones that, that are, that are actually links to projects, acknowledgements to projects um, in a publication. So one of the things we have to be careful is to do some big grade results. So for example, uh, some project IDs of the Research Council of Finland uh, match are identical to ECFP7 projects, or uh, some of the NHMRC in Australia are similar to Horizon 2020 projects, uh, similar with some other Russian, Russian funders and, and things like that. So here's an example of, uh, of uh, these are statements, acknowledgement statements, data collected was supported by the Academy of Finland center, blah, 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 grant number, 213506, but this can also be European's community, seventh framework program, uh, grand number. So this we have to do some big grade by looking at the text um, around the match. <clears throat> and uh, this is another example there. So we do we do that, and we also use the, the context near the match to also uh, give a confidence to, to the match. So we look at uh, other metadata that we can find there, like for example, if it's an EC project, it has an acronym, and so is the acronym mentioned. Um, and we also use uh, other key phrases or words, uh, basically mining rules. Uh, we simplify it by saying there are positive and negative words or phrases. The positive increase the confidence that the match is, is correct. The negative will decrease the match. So things like for EC projects, it could be you know uh, generic words like funded project um, supports and things like that, or more specific like the Marie Curie grants or ERC grants and things like that. So these are 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 uh, some are common in all the project mining algorithms. Other are specific for the for the funder we we are dealing with. And uh, other things that we want to eliminate, you know, if there's a report number that matches a, a grant ID. Uh, so this is where we also optimize a threshold uh, of the confidence values. So anything below that threshold, we will not allow, we will consider false positive. And uh, in order to eliminate things like uh, page report numbers, you know, matches to postcodes, parts of telephone numbers, DOI, the session numbers and other things that can be confused. And again, it depends on the funder. Some funders have very unique uh, grant IDs. Um, so there, you don't need to complicate things. Others, uh, uh, like, you know, with the EC, for example, with six uh, digits uh, might be confused with, with other entities. So this is an important step there. And uh, I'm just going to explain how we implement the algorithm. There's a kind of an iterative process we go through. So first, when one fund arrives in, in OpenAir, we develop an algorithm and test on local data sets and you know, a subset of OpenAir publications where we manually are able to curate the results and tune the algorithm, you know, decide which pre-processing function we'll use. For example, we might disable the punctuation removal if the identifiers uh, contain punctuation, punctuation marks, which could be useful for, for the mining, uh, where for others, they, they hinder the mining, so we will uh, enable the removal. Um, and we might fine tune the positive and negative words with the, the rules with naive base and some manual work. And this is a process that may take a couple of iterations, 
So it usually takes uh, one to three iterations to eliminate. Well, eliminate is a strong word. Eliminate can happen in some cases. Some sometimes we might end up with very rare um, false positives. Um, and then the the module is integrated with the IS workflow, and we run it in in our sandbox, the Open Air Beta infrastructure. We validate the results there that we see and fine tune the the algorithm if necessary. At that stage, we we also communicate with the founder and to all see the result and approve them. And then we are able to promote to production, which means you know uh, the links can be visible in in the graph in Explore, Open Air Explore, and uh, the other services. So the idea of the mining algorithms in general is to eliminate two types of errors. So we don't want false positives. So we don't want to uh, identify something as an entity that it isn't, you know, say that this uh, project belongs to, uh, is, is, is funded by uh, project X when it isn't. But uh, the other uh, also, we don't want to have a false negative. So in, in okay, in, in, in the mining uh, of the funding, this means to, to miss uh, publications acknowledged by specific projects. Uh, so uh, this is the some of the general stats on the precision and recall. Uh, it, 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 it varies, the performance varies for different funders, but usually we aim for a, a precision rate, rate much higher than 98%. Uh, for the EC, it's 99.5. For some funders with very unique IDs, it is nearly 100%. Uh, for others, it might be a bit less. Uh, recall rate uh, is more difficult to calculate, but in the test that we've done, uh, it's uh, higher than 95% and 99% uh, for EC projects. And usually because our algorithms are very greedy, initially they match everything, we, we hope that we don't miss. Uh, uh, it's more, more likely that we will have false matches which we can eliminate rather than, than miss uh, an acknowledgement. Um, so what happens now when funded projects are not available? So there's two cases that this can happen. It's either authors may acknowledge a funder in their funding statement, uh, but not the relevant project. So in some papers, you, you know, with Canadian funders, for example, that we have in Open Air, you would see they mentioned the funder, but not the actual project. Uh, Greek funders do that. You know, um, half of the publications end up being like that. Um, we used to see that also with uh, people acknowledging welcome trust and things like that. So this is not uncommon. Uh, and the other issue is when funders uh, have joined uh, Open Air but have not yet provided their project metadata, and that might happen. It 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 never happened before because it was a um, we would have a funder come into Open Air, register with the uh, project data, then develop the mining. Uh, approve it with them, uh, fully curate it, and then uh, release all the, you know, uh, the module, the output of the module and the links. But uh, since last year that we now um, have uh, national open access uh, monitors of countries, for example, like for Ireland, uh, where all of a sudden 152 funders had to be covered, uh, then we, in order to quickly produce uh, a version where they can see initial results and start, uh, um, you know, um, helping us adapt the dashboard to their needs, um, then we we had to include um, funders without having their full project metadata. So they will provide publications knowing that they're linked to a funder uh, from all the sources that we aggregate from the metadata we get, like from Crossref and Open Fund Funder Reference uh, Registry from Crossref. But um, we will not be able to provide information to the at the project level. So, but remember that projects are main graph entities. If somebody looks at the project documentation, you will see that projects are, are uh, when we have organizations which funders are part of, but uh, it's projects that are linked to research outputs. And through them, it goes to organizations. So the way we've uh, so far handled the situation where we don't have projects for a funder, we call uh, we have produced an entity uh, which we called unidentified project. This is like behind the scene works. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, you will see a link to a funder, uh, but we don't modify the uh, the, um, uh, the way the graph structure is. Just we just link to the unidentified project for that funder. So this creates a link to the funder, but not at the project level, which means it's uh, it's also harder to mine because we now have the name of the funder, but no, not much other additional information. So more prone to false positives. 
Um, so let me give you two examples for the first case uh, where the authors acknowledge a funder in their funding statement, but not the relevant project. So here's one ex example of a publication acknowledging two Greek funders. So for the Hellenic General Secretary for Research and Technology, they don't just mention uh, GSRT, but there is no project. Whereas for the Hellenic Foundation for Research and Innovation, for HFRI, there is the grant number. So this is a frequent case. So this, we will link only to the project, to the unidentified project. So you will see it as a link to the funder, but no more uh, details. Uh, now, uh, something to, uh, oh yeah, for the case now where we don't have the full projects and we only have the funder name to mine, um, then things are a bit more difficult. I want to explain the difficulties. If you're looking for a name, uh, here's an ex a recent example from the Health, Health Research Board in Ireland. So Health Research Board is a kind of generic name. There are many health research boards. So we have to be very careful when we uh, look at these things and we want to eliminate uh, uh, funding organizations that are not the, the entity we look at. This is a common mistake in, and it, uh, you will see in, in, in data that Open Air collects, for example, for from from publishers and Crossref, they will use automatic mining uh, that looks at the funder name without, uh, and these uh, mistakes um, come into. So we prefer to develop our own uh, mining module to eliminate these kind of issues. And the other thing we also have to determine that the reference to the health research board is actually about mining and not uh, somebody mentioning a, a report about the health research board. So this is another issue. Whereas if you're looking for a project number, usually uh, they are, it's just an acknowledgement. They don't refer to a project number just to, um, to you for some uh, minor information. So anyway, uh, the so for example, for the HRB in Ireland, it took a, a couple of iterations, and but we managed to to increase uh, the precision to ninety nine percent. Um, so the point here is to show that there is a lot of effort involved in iteration to do it on a minor, uh, funder by funder basis so that we have good quality. Now, this is examples of where it picks up. Uh, so in this, in a publication here, it mentions UKRI, where we link to this uh, grant number if you see this publication opener. But uh, we, before we would not link to Health Research Board because there was no project ID, but now we do because we've added this uh, uh, unidentified mining for HRB. So now we're gonna go on the other mining modules um, and th these I will go in, in less detail. They work in a very similar way. I'm not gonna cover all of them, but to give you an idea of the enrichment phase. So one of the uh, important ones is the uh, data sets extraction algorithm, which uh, mines the full text of publications in order to extract links to data sets. It's based on an algorithm uh, we've developed. We use a uh, high-pass text filtering technique in order to identify areas of the text which look like uh, citations. So it looks at frequency of dates and other uh, uh, other metadata that uh, will hi highlight that this area of the uh, of the text. And remember, we're processing uh, full text, plain text. Uh, the PDFs have been converted to full text. So we look at areas that uh, look like citations. Um, or would mention um, uh, a data set, and then we match with the information we have on data sets uh, from, you know, from say places like uh, like data site and things like that. So we match first for DOIs, which is the easiest. You know, if you match all that DOI, we you accept and it's referred to that data set. But sometimes DOIs may be missing, so we would look at the uh, data set title, um, dates, creator names, publishers, and other things in order to match. So we match also when there is no link, a direct link, but there is a mention of the data set. Um, so, and it's, we use database join and pattern matching techniques. I'm not going to go into the details of that. Uh, precision rate is, is lower than the uh, project mining. Uh, it's about 98.5% with re recall 97.4%. Um, this is based on, on, on tests we've done on, on samples from PubMed and Archive. So it's not a you know, complete um, assessment. Uh, another uh, uh, module that enriches the graph is the software mining module. So again, we search publications for citations and this specific to open source software here. So th um, software hosted in GitHub, Bitbucket, SourceForge, uh, the old Google code and things like that. But then we match the URLs with software heritage 
so Software Heritage is an aggregator of all of the of software repositories. At the moment, it had it has an archive of almost uh, 19 billion source files, uh, uh, 4 billion commits, and 297 uh, million projects. It preserves software source code and provides intrinsic persistent identifiers for so software artifacts. And the other thing that this mining module does, it will enrich the content metadata using web mining. So once we found the page where the software is, we will try to uh, add uh, things like usernames, titles, description, and whatever else we can enrich from. Uh, the precision is 100% in the sense that it's based on URL matching. Uh, so we return a software link only if we find it in the text. And there is also um, no need to disambiguate like the other things. Um, and we we account for the usual, you know, uh, issues like, you know, is WW mentioned or not, lower uppercase and things like that, obviously. Uh, but we do not mind cases where a piece of software is not mentioned using its name or not linked by the supported software repositories. Uh, that's why we ensure the precision. Now, uh, another interesting module is the bioentities mining. And the first one that was integrated in OpenAir and the graph is the protein data bank. Uh, mining. So we mine the publications to extract matches to PDB codes. Uh, this was one of the hardest modules to develop because the uh, these are very small entities we try to match. They're alphanumeric uh, uh, codes that um, can be confused with many other things, with the genes and protein codes. Uh, no, protein, they are protein codes. With our gene names and antibodies, uh, which contain proteins. Uh, they could be confused with software names, like 3DNA is also PDP, but a software. Uh, years, we have 1914, uh, and other things which are, you know, very confusing for mining, uh, like, you know, two minutes or six hours, 20 seconds, probably. F 4th of May, this looks, looks like an exponent, 5 megahertz, but these are 4 times 20. So this could be mentioned uh, in, in a paper in a thousand of other contexts and not refer to projects. So obviously, they're the context around the match and the disambiguation we do is very important. Um, so it took a while to develop, but the precision rate was 98% uh, during our tests. And we compared with uh, some samples in uh, Europe PMC that we had at the time, uh, and it was 98% uh, the recall rate. Uh, I have to say this comparison was done a couple of years ago, so I'm not sure now, but at the time we were able to find uh, a lot more PDB codes that, that were tagged in PubMed but I cannot claim that now, we need to repeat that test. Um, okay, this I might, because I'm running out of time, I wanna repeat, this is uh, just, then we could use the PDB entries to do some other mining, which is more for biology uh, applications and it's probably not relevant in uh, for this talk, but I want to say that at this moment, we are, uh, and maybe my colleague, Eleni Zaharia is in uh, on the talk, in this uh, attending this call, uh, she's developing. Um, no, she has developed uh, fifty-two different uh, bioentity mining modules uh, or accession numbers. It's not only for uh, uh, bioentities, but other chemical, meteorological, other kind of entities that are useful to search with. Uh, this was in a collaboration we did with uh, Springer Nature, and uh, soon these will be integrated in the graph. I mean, they're actually in the process of uh, being merged. Um, so, um, okay, let me mention some of the kind of communities or other mining, specific mining that we do for different things. So, for example, we have a COVID-19 uh, uh, dashboard in open air, uh, which was created after the COVID pandemic started. We thought, well, it'd be good to collect all the research uh, publications that are relevant to COVID. So there was, a, uh, in, at the time, very kind of simple um, a mining algorithm we used uh, based on here we used also year. Uh, sometimes we don't use additional data. We didn't want older because uh, um, yeah, coronaviruses have existed before. We didn't want the older publications initially. We wanted to focus on the um, uh, COVID nineteen, and at the time even the names were not uh, had not been fixed. So we were looking at different things. Uh, and uh, so we had produced this community. And also we provide for different research infrastructures and other connect communities. This will be the subject of a, maybe another co a call and uh, or also uh, covered by the connect community calls where we do specific mining for different uh, communities. Uh, uh, 
So I will also uh, briefly mention the classifiers that have been recently added in open air. So this is the, um, we have developed a classification scheme for the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, so this will help view contributions of research towards complex challenges, you know, for humanity, such as climate change, biodiversity loss, pollution, poverty reduction, and anything covered by the SDGs. Uh, so this has been added. And the other thing is also a fields of science classification. Um, <clears throat> and these are also uh, used in some of our services that they enrich uh, the, the services. So one application of all this is in the in open in the open air monitor, which is uh, it tracks an organization's research output uh, in a comprehensive manner, uh, providing many indicators and uh, and statistics and graphs, which are useful for different stakeholders, uh, funders, research institutions, and research initiatives. So. Uh, just to see it in the pipeline. So at the end of all this process, uh, the the open air graph feeds the monitor. And what is also good with uh, services like this, because at, in the monitor, for example, funders uh, have monitors, they can look at uh, things say missing or things that may look odd and provide user feedback, will, which can improve aggregation many times, as I've shown in some of the community call uh, presentations for the monitor page. Uh, the feedback is uh, interesting information that uh, is not a mistake of the graph, but is something that was unusual in a particular project and it was picked up by the monitor. Uh, but other times it helps us identify gaps uh, that we can, or say a repository that is missing and needs to be added. So, um, and and also for the monitor, just, uh, just the last slide I think I have on this, is that uh, many of the indicators rely on the enrichment by mining. So things that, you know, because we want to provide indicators uh, per grants or pr projects, uh, you know, top 15 projects with uh, public, with uh, num by number of publications, for example, and things like that. Uh, so this relies again to the, in the enrichment that we've done there. And also, as you can see, the sustainable development goals. So there's things for funding, research output, open science indicators, collaboration indicators, and impact indications, indicators. More of these are covered in the community calls. And there's one coming up uh, in, in May uh, very soon. In the previous one, I presented the new, indicators for funders uh, the next one will be for uh, will be i think in 21st or 22nd of may i, I'll, I will check that later uh, but um, please join if you want more information about the monitor okay this is some of the indicators for the monitor so you can see some sdg indicators and uh, fos indicators uh, and some about funders uh, another thing i want to mention is that uh, in in explore <laughs> recently we had added um in Open Air Explorer, you can see a funders page uh, where you can find uh, kind of a summary information for funders. And since funders are a part of this today's call, I just wanted to mention that um, <clears throat> there you can find a kind of a card for each uh, funder with some information. There's a link to a monitor dashboard if it exists and links to their projects and research products. So by clicking on that, it will take you to the Explore page where you can uh, see and search the links for each funder. Um, and um, we can look at that if you want, but I'm not going to uh, say more of that. I'm going to stop here so we can have uh, uh, questions. Uh, you can contact me at this email, but uh, you can also have a look at the documentation on the, the graph uh, portal page. And uh, also, please uh, ask any questions on the help desk. We also have, let me, let me show here, if you go on the graph page, <clears throat> You can also join the graph user forum uh, where you can answer, uh, uh, you know, uh, pose your questions and have the community answer. Um, just a uh, thing I mentioned earlier, some of the things that you might be looking might not be working uh, still today. So you see a question mark in the research products. If I go dive deeper, deeper in statistics, you should get a lot of numbers. You might get uh, full of question marks. And that is because of the issue I mentioned in the morning, this uh, yeah, well, there's no loading now <laughs> either, but there was a big fire in the uh, biggest shopping center in Warsaw, which is located next to the uh, data center of ICM, which uh, feeds those services in open air. And they're working on you know, auxiliary power at the moment, you know, basically diesel um, 
uh, generators. So if apologies, if anything is, is missing, they've restored most of the services, but some of the uh, things are not available. Uh, here, I can also say that, uh, I would like to say that if you look at the, the support, uh, you can find uh, more information, like for example, on how to access the graph via the APIs. So for example, there's the uh, search APIs or the uh, Scholar Explorer API for dataset publication, dataset links, uh, or the search API for the research products and projects that I mentioned. And for example, you can search for um, publications, research data, research software, and get them in different uh, formats that you want. And, and also the, the, the graph dumps also uh, available in, uh, in, you can find them in Zenodo, uh, the data sets. Uh, I think that have been shown, has been shown in previews. Uh, so now some of the links might be slow today. Anyway, uh, also for funders or uh, people, not only funders, for people that are in, have monitor services, there is the develop uh, 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 tab where they can have access to selective access APIs and back access APIs. And there's some examples of here's for EDC, how to access some of these uh, products. Uh, did it come? Yes, it, okay, this is, oh no. Okay, this is not what I was looking, this is the older. Uh, anyway, um, so this is what I had to say. Uh, we might uh, go into more specific things if you if you have some questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Harry. Um, uh -huh. So it uh, looks like so we'll start off with um, well questions, of uh -huh. course. So we'll see if anybody first, would anybody like to raise their hand? Anybody have any questions they'd like to ask directly? If not, we'll move on to those posted in the Google Doc and the registration form. Oh, okay, all right. Well, then let's go on to some questions that were uh, posted um, in the registration. So first, uh, we had the question, how to obtain enrichment data in CSV or via API? Okay, so I th think this is probably what I answered. Uh, some of these things are not working today, unfortunately. I think you will not. But if you go here, uh, I mean, in the searching for research products, for example, uh, you will see that you can access, for example, uh, get from CSV. And there is uh, this documentation of how to do that. Um, <clears throat> and But some of them might not be working today. So, and I think they probably will not. Uh, Yes, well, I'm getting no response at the moment, but uh, so uh, I think the best place for this is oh, go to the documentation uh, and support APIs or the general documentation. You will find all that uh, there. I don't know if somebody else from the graph team uh, 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 would, would like to answer anything more about this. Or, or if whoever posed the question. <laughs> um, I saw uh, Claudia was uh, was um, writing a response. I don't know if Claudia, if you'd like to elaborate on that. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I was trying to find the proper window and unmute myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I was writing a more detailed response in the Google document. Um, I see uh, the answer, uh, the, the question from Stefano. So enrichments in general in the graph are added value information that uh, uh, OpenAir is capable to build. As Harry um, explained today, a link between a publication and the research pro project that uh, allowed to work on a given research is uh, can be seen as one of the added value information. This information is visible uh, on different channels. Uh, for example, the project link can be uh, is returned among the uh, attributes that characterize a publication accessible on Explore and therefore also on the search APIs, as I just wrote uh, in uh, also in the response in our shared Google Doc. Uh, but uh, Opener also has a service dedicated to synthesizing all the various enrichments that uh, it builds uh, along uh, the graph processing pipeline which is the broker service. So there are various uh, topics of enrichments. So uh, the various enrichments are organized in topics. 
to which uh, users generally uh, repository managers can subscribe to and access them. Through IUI, they are visible on uh, Provide OpenL EU. There is a specific section on the Provide portal dedicated to the enrichments or via, API, or via um, the broker APIs, uh, which for the moment only respond, provide responses in JSON format. Uh, so they do not support uh, at the moment a CSV serialization. And I think this uh, covers for this part. Great, thank you. Um, and then that, uh, so as we can see in the Google Doc, there was actually a second part to that, well, not to the same question, but the, the submitter had two questions. Um, and if we don't have any other questions at the moment, specifically on enrichment, um, because the next one is a bit off topic, but it could still be interesting to address um, if we don't have anything on enrichment at the moment. Looks like nothing in the Q&A. Okay, so the other question um, was, how do you define a journal as diamond or bronze as an open root? So if someone from the team can answer that. Again, it's a bit off topic, but as we don't have uh, anything concerning enrichment at the moment, could still be interesting to address while we're all here. I can echo what I wrote uh, in, uh, in the response. In general, um, uh, the reference here is on the link provided. So there is a page in the Open Air Monitor where uh, there is a section that dedicated to illustrate how the constructed attributes are built. Uh, that I summarized here, uh, a description on how uh, we uh, apply the definition of diamond journals. So a journal can be considered fully open access gold. And these journals are either diamond when they uh, do not charge, uh, do not uh, apply article processing charges or with article processing charges. Then a, can, a publication can be gold when it is in a diamond journal, hybrid when uh, in a hybrid journal with licensing or bronze when it is published in a hybrid journal without a license. So Diamond Open Access can be considered to be defined uh, for a fully open access journal that do not charge article processing charges. So in other words, a fully open access uh, journal are either Diamond or charge APCs. Instead, Bronze is a definition that applies uh, to publications, not to journals. And then the link to the page where all the definitions uh, for these attributes should be visible. Thank you. Um, so it looks like we do have a question in the in the Zoom question and answers. Um, it's a bit of a long one, so I've also pasted it into the the Google Doc, um, if it may be easier to look at it to, to formulate a response. Um, but I'll read it out as well for, for everyone. So the main uh, problem is the completement of the information in the platform supply. In general, the graph shows great information about research products. However, especially when the point is evaluating the researchers as well as the research as well as researchers, missing information can be a real problem. So to overcome this, one, is Open Air planning to give a service for researcher profiles, kind of an ORCID profile, but with more info embedded? In this case, users can verify their research and claim missing info so that profile is completed, completed and verified. With this way, the algorithms to extract the data could also be improved by getting feedback from researcher profiles. Is there any service for that? Julia raised her hand. I think she wants to probably answer. Yes. yes. <laughs> OK, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I am uh, um, part of the Open Air team who is working in the project that is called uh, Grasp OS, which is uh, a project in which we are uh, developing uh, uh, tools and uh, interoperate several services. In a way, we can provide more support in uh, the research assessment. 
regarding uh, the idea of having a researcher's profile, um, the Open Air uh, team has already started a pilot with uh, uh, the Irish Monitor to um, start providing the information that we have in the Open Air Graph that are related to uh, the researchers. Uh, the Open Air Graph is also linked with uh, uh, ORCID, so we are retrieving some information. What we are uh, uh, now working on in the GraspOS project is uh, um, to design uh, this uh, researcher's page in a way in which we can combine the qualitative uh, um, and the narrative uh, curriculum with uh, um, a narrative information uh, with uh, what we are retrieving uh, as, uh, uh, let's say, quantitative or uh, um, in a way uh, what we are uh, uh, collecting as uh, evidence-based information that are related to the, um, to the um, uh, researchers. Uh, in this moment, uh, the graph is used by um, a tool that is called the BIP Scholar. And uh, um, basically in uh, this service uh, that is also part of GraspOS, uh, you can check uh, in our website uh, a webinar that is related to that. You can uh, um, start uh, working on uh, um, the information that you can retrieve uh, from uh, your articles. For instance, we are looking at the credit taxonomy to identify what kind of contribution uh, the researchers has, uh, uh, the researchers have in uh, um, a publication, uh, but also the possibility to comment. So now we are refining this um, uh, tool and we hope that uh, by the end of this uh, year, we will be able to show some uh, mock-up but yeah, it's in our pipeline. Thank you, Julia. That answered uh, the question. I don't know if the person who asked the question had any follow-up. All right, then it looks like we can go on to the second part of the question. Um, so, is there any plan for field-based platforms for computer scientists, chemists, physicists, et cetera, separately? This way the service can work faster and the chance of obtaining more relevant info increases. There are filters, but specific domain services would do much better, I guess. Okay, well, we have communities, uh, the connect communities that may be relevant. So for different communities and there you will get the, the, the information uh, for specific communities. Uh, this may be close to that idea, but not exactly. Uh, I don't know. Let's see if Connect is working. Uh, yes, community. So for here, there are some things, uh, you know, for Argo, for instance, or there's, uh, um, uh, you know, now this Corona I mentioned, there is, uh, I don't know, uh, there's some for uh, biology. There's some uh, where you, you can get, you know, marine science, so you will get the products uh, for marine science and people can uh, look at those specific uh, uh, and assess these, uh, the publications uh, and the research uh, specific for these communities. Um, so I think that goes towards that kind of, uh, but maybe that's not exactly what you're looking for, but... Uh, Maybe I can uh, complement also here uh, mm -hmm. what you're saying. So basically, in um, what we are doing in uh, um, with the Open Air uh, Connect is uh, basically uh, retrieve the information that can be of interest to you for a specific uh, query. Let's say that you have uh, a community that is a thematic community, like it was the case of uh, um, the COVID, uh, um, COVID community that was shown before by Harry. In that case, the mining was a topic uh, uh, related uh, mining, but also in the projects. Yeah. Uh, another uh, uh, example in which we are uh, uh, helping uh, to do uh, even more complex mining 
is uh, a community for uh, big data that are related uh, on uh, health uh, issues. In that case, we are also mining for field of science. We are also filtering uh, the information that we have in the open air graph uh, by the journals uh, that can be related and by the project that the community knows uh, that can be of interest. In that case, we are building a specific, let's say, we give you the tool, the instruments uh, to decide uh, what kind of information are of interest for you and where uh, you can retrieve this data, for instance, uh, thematic rep repositories uh, or uh, a group of uh, uh, repositories that maybe are part of a consortium uh, or um, are part of uh, uh, university alliances. So there are many possibilities. You can use also uh, keywords or sentence uh, as in the case of funders. Great, thank you, Julia. Um, don't know again if uh, the person who submitted had a follow-up to that. Would like to any more clarification or if that was okay, it's all good. Okay, so um, we had another question posted in the chat here. So the question is, how much of the graph content is mined? Example, how many full text, abstracts, etc., out of the to total number of entries? Yeah, uh, this is a good question. I don't have the last figure, actually, which, yeah, uh, um, I don't know if, if Claudio, remember, you remember how many million publications were, were uh, full text we had? Uh, I mean, this is probably something that Mark could answer, but he's not yes, here. Yes, I do remember, but I mm -hmm. think it's worth to mention that um, beyond uh, the extraction to of references to funders, which is one type of mining algorithm that uh, do leverage on the full texts, and this covers for like 25 million of PDFs that so far OpenAir managed to acquire. There are other kinds of uh, mining algorithms that instead only work on uh, the metadata that yeah. is available within the graph. And those algorithms uh, exploit the attributes available in each bibliographic record, as well as on the topology of the graph. So exploiting both the properties, but also the relationships among the various nodes that are available in the graph. And those work, uh, consider the full span of contents that is available in the graph. But these will be, um, the, those algorithms will be the, better described in one of the next uh, community calls, I guess. Yes, because I think this is one of the later stages is the enrichment by inference. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions? Any other questions? I see nothing here or nothing new in the Google Doc. Okay, so then I just also wanted to take uh, this opportunity a couple minutes before we close um, to share something with you we recently posted in the Open Air Graph user forum. So we're currently working on developing new APIs. And as we're developing these, it raised the question, what kind of information would you like to get out of an open orgs API? So we've posted this uh, prompt in the user form and we'd love to hear your feedback because we wanna hear what you need, what you would like for to, to see in the APIs so we can better develop the graph for these needs. So I'm going to post here. Oh, well, perfect. <laughs> Someone already has it up. <laughs> Thank you. So that's so, it, right? Yep, that's exactly it. So I'm also just going to post um, the, the the link to the discussion itself uh, okay. here in the chat. Um, and feel free, of course, to sign up for the forum. The forum is open for everyone. We wanted to have a direct channel. Of course, we have our help desk for technical questions, um, like more specific prop uh, issues. Um, but we wanted to, of course, create a more direct channels. And I know we've presented this at previous uh, community calls. Um, for, for these kinds of things, to give you more updates, to create a start a discussion, and also for you and the community amongst yourselves as well, if you wanted to share tips or ask questions, anything like that. So um, here's a link to the specific discussion um, in the forum. 
And then as you follow that link, you can, of course, sign up for the forum yourself um, and post any questions and get the, the conversation rolling. I don't know if there's anything else we wanted to say. I know um, if uh, for those interested in the monitor community calls um, that were mentioned, Julia posted the links to those in the chat as well. Um, and I also put the link for that in the Google Doc. So at the end of the Google Doc, under all the questions, you have a note section with useful links from the from the presentation. So there you can find um, some links, which as well have those to the community calls and the um, forum discussion I just mentioned. Don't know if there's anything else. Yes, uh, yes, Julia. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you so much for uh, a reminder for the next community call uh, next week uh, about the monitor. Uh, I would also uh, maybe take the chance to answer quickly uh, to um, uh, the question from uh, uh, Emily. Ah, yes, uh, of course. Thank you. Yeah, there was the, the question that they were asking, uh, what is uh -huh. the main difference uh, between uh, the Open Air Graph and uh, Open Alex? Uh, so, uh, fortunately, uh, uh, the community of the open science uh, uh, is uh, um, is a supporting non-commercial uh, um, resources, uh, uh, knowledge graph, we call them. Uh, and uh, we are happy that there are uh, uh, another. There is another uh, uh, non-profit organization like Open Alex, uh, who is uh, providing uh, um, a similar system uh, uh, of the Open Air Graph. The difference that we have uh, is uh, that we are trying uh, to involve uh, um, the community to help us in uh, focus on uh, what kind of priorities uh, you would like. We uh, retrieve more information, for instance, on uh, uh, data and software uh, because we uh, run uh, with uh, the uh, European Commission uh, um, needs uh, and also the community needs from the repository um, managers to retrieve more information and to, to gather um, data that can be related to other fields. Uh, our process is very transparent and we made a lot of efforts to uh, document uh, um, everything in the open air graph. Uh, you can search for the documentation and there you have the information. If uh, uh, the language that we are using is too technical, uh, you should come here and ask more questions so we can also understand if uh, um, there are some uh, jargons uh, gap. Uh, and we are happy to know more about uh, what do you think, how you would like to use, uh, if you need uh, more support and guides uh, from us uh, to improve uh, our services. Thank you so much, Julie. And I just wanted to add on top of that, um, something we've heard uh, a couple, well, actually several times is uh, we've heard people coming back and saying that um, Open Alex has the supports, um, you know, bibliometrics, OS monitoring, all these things, um, and that Open Air Graph doesn't. And I wanted to clear that up that the Open Air Graph does uh, support bibliometric analysis. Um, we have a lot a lot of information um, and in some ways it's, it can be more extensive than Open Alex in the terms of bibliometrics. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that yes, the graph is capable for, for um, bibliometric analysis. And in the Open Air Graph website, if you go to the about section, um, I'm just gonna put that here as well. Um, you'll see a very brief, uh, a brief um, description on the graph and how it's used in bibliometrics, OS mo open science monitoring and discovery. And we're gonna be expanding on those to give more information um, in that section um, on how it is exactly used for bibliometric analysis, how you can use it, the open data. So I did want to also just add on and clarify, bring that. Yep. So there we go. You can see that here. Um, so assigned how it's used, where is it used, discovery, bibliometrics, and open science monitoring. And we will be expanding on these to give more information as well to, because it seems there's some maybe misunder, not misunderstanding, but it's, we just want to make sure that it's clear that yes, you can use the graph for that. Great, so it looks like we're a minute over. So I assume everybody probably has other meetings and things to get on with their day. So thank you again, everybody for joining us. Um, 
will have, sorry, I just realized my camera's off. Um, so uh, as always, we'll post the uh, materials for this call in the Open Air Graph website. Um, the link I posted up above before. Um, those will be avail available from the end of the week once we get the recording uploaded, the slides and everything. So if you missed, well, not if you missed out, maybe you missed part of the presentation or would like to look back on it. And of course, feel free to share with anybody else that you think might um, find this uh, call useful. And We'll see you next month uh, for our next call. And yes, thank you. And thank you again, Harry, for the presentation and uh -huh. everyone. Thank for you the, all for team. attending. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harry, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.